So it's summer where I live and I want to make a summer soap. Ideally, I want to make a beach soap. Now, I've made a soap a few years ago that I, it had some pineapples and it had a, it was like an, an ocean wave with cold process soap. This time I want to do something similar but instead of using cold process soap on top, I want to use melt and pour, clear melt and pour, so that it looks more like water. And that's what today's soap is all about. And I'm sorry for the noise, there's a lot of planes. As far as the body of this soap, I wanted it to be initially like a light turquoise, similar to this one, with that effect. But now I'm thinking about doing a deeper teal, like a deeper turquoise color. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but come along and let's find out. To make soap, I'm wearing a facial shield and also neutral gloves. The first thing I need to do is measure the amount of oils that I'm going to use. Uh, they are at 106 Fahrenheit or, or 40 Celsius. If you're curious to see what these oils are, I'm going to include a link to the recipe in the description box below. Next, I need to measure the light water solution. Um, I measure it ahead, like I master batch a big portion of it so that when I need to make soap, I just need to measure up what I need to use. Okay, so that's how much the lye and the liquid weigh. It was 5.80. So now I'm going to add extra water so that it will be 34% lye concentration instead of 40%. Because I, the fragrance accelerates a lot and I don't want it to seize. So I'm going to add one extra ounce of distilled water. Now listen, the thunder that you're going to hear, that was actually happening. I'm not adding any special effects. To this is at room temperature. Actually, today is a little bit warmer. I think that there must have been some residue of oils in this container. Perhaps when I washed it, there was a slight film of oils in it. And when the lye touches oil or anything oily, it will start to react and it will start to warm up. Altogether, it's at 94. Next, I'm going to measure the fragrance that I will use for the white portion of the soap. This part I'm going to add lemongrass mint. It's a well-behaved fragrance and it doesn't change colors. To this I'm going to add winter white mica. I'm going to add half a teaspoon and I'm going to set it apart. Now I'm going to stick blend this lightly to emulsion. So I used the stick blender about five times. I did five bursts in the space of 30 seconds. In that time it reach a motion phase so I went ahead and separated six ounces and I poured them into that container that I separated before the one with the white mica and the lemongrass mint fragrance I'm going to add the teal color one of my favorite colors azure blue mica I'm going to put one teaspoon It's easier to dissolve if I, I would have dispersed it in oil prior, but if I keep stirring it patiently, it should be fine. So here I'm going to prepare the fragrance for this portion, which is going to be sun and sand. I'm going to use half an ounce of this. In total, I need 0.85 ounces. The rest is going to be satsuma. So I'm going to need 0.20 ounces of this. It seems to be at a very, very light trace. This is the mold that I'm going to be using. I use a 3D printed divider and I hope to only use this part. Okay, so I'm going to add this fragrance. Last time I used the fragrance, it caused rising and acceleration. And actually, here is the footage. This was for the Tiger Puzzle Soap. 
and the acceleration and the chunks and rising happened right away. But for this wave soap, it didn't do that. Different things that I've done this time is that number one, I didn't use uh, as big of a water discount as I did in the past, and number two, my butter was at emulsion instead of at trace. And number three, I did blend this fragrance with a desolidating fragrance or a well-behaved fragrance, which was the Satsuma Orange. So I think those three factors helped. Also, I use a spatula to blend the fragrance, which I did that last time, but this time I didn't use the stick blender as much prior. And lastly, it's a good idea to use, to add the fragrance last. I took the temperature of the butter to see if it was rising, but it wasn't. Usually if a fragrance is causing your soap butter to accelerate, the temperature is going to go high with every minute. I did want the teal color to be at a different consistency than the white. I wanted the teal to be thicker and the white to remain as a thin butter so that they wouldn't blend together too much. So I let them sit for a few minutes, about 10 minutes. So I'm just going to mix them together. So at this point, the turquoise soap butter is at a thicker trace than the white one. I'm going to use a stainless steel spoon to create the beginning of a wave. I'm actually going to take out some soap because I don't think I'm going to have room for the melting pot otherwise. My first idea for the wave was to pour some melting pot and create a thin layer and then build on that. However, as you can see, most of the melting pot is going into that cavity that I made at the bottom. So then I tried to use a spoon to hold it in place because this melting pot tends to harden quite fast. But it didn't quite work because I, I couldn't hold the spoon there the whole time until it hardened enough. Next, I tried to create a wave with the semi-hardened part of the melting pot and I tried to use a chopsticks to create this texture. However, this did not work very well either. And so the wave is not coming the way I thought. So I'm going to make this is a silicone stamp. I'm going to attempt to make a taquito out of it. it. Needs to be smaller. I'm going to attempt to keep it close with this rubber band. Okay, I'm going to put it here, and now I'm going to attempt to pour the rest of the melting pot on top of this. I'm going to try to make it a smaller again. As I pour the soap on top, I'm trying to hold on to the taquito by pushing it against the side to keep the soap from going down and also to keep it from lifting the taquito up. At this point, I realized that it was going to take more melt and pour than what I had in hand. So I'm just going to make do with what I have. Also, the divider is not as tall as the opposite wall of the mold. So I'm putting this stamp just as a provisional wall. And I also put a piece of melt and pour there to prevent the melted soap from going inside. I'm going to try to contain it. And now it wants to lick in here. I don't think this is going to work. So, however, I'm going to fill this some more. And later I think I'm just going to carve the wave. Overall, it took me two minutes to remove the silicone taquito out of the soap. Uh, first, I tried using a painting knife to remove the melting pour that was on the sides. Then what seemed to work best was pushing the silicone down so that it will release from the top. Then I also had to trim the melting pour that had leaked from the top to the inside of the silicone 
and I use the palette knife to do that. I also use the palette knife to cut a chunk of the melt and pour that was at the bottom and that seemed to be holding the silicone taquito in place and after removing that I was able to pull it and take it off. At this point the soap is still somewhat soft and I'm trying not to manipulate it too much because it seems that I am damaging the edges by doing so. I wanted to start shaping the wave in one motion and I used the palette knife to start that but then I realized I risk ruining the bars by touching them tight so I decided to wait until I cut them to do that. My cutter is struggling to cut the, through the thicker part of the melting port on top. I do have a thicker wire than usual and I'm going very slowly because I don't want to break it. And here is the first bar. The color turned out to be a lot lighter than I expected it. I thought it was going to be a darker teal. However, this is still pretty. Later, I removed the extra melt and pour from the corner to create that curved shape of waves. I used for two of the bars, just a knife and then a vegetable peeler to soften that corner. And then for the other two, I used a flexible blade. This is something that I have from my polymer clay hobby. And I pretty much flex the blade into a curve and at the same time, I push it down the soap to cut it. It still gave me a little bit of a rough edge or pointy edge so I did a second cut and this seemed to give me the smoothest result. I am seeking other beach fragrances to use in future soaps. If you happen to have any recommendations I'll be happy to see them down below. Thank you for visiting my channel and I'll see you next week. More willing. Bye!